It's Jumbo Buxano, George's own jackpot game. Hello, everybody. I'm John Crow. Tonight's jackpot is an estimated annuitized two million dollars. Let's find out if you're a winner. Our first winning number tonight is forty-six. That's followed by four. Up next, we have twenty-seven. Your next number is five. That's followed by thirty-eight. And your final winning Jumbo Buxano number is fourteen. L O T T O. It's your game, Georgia. WJBF Live by for six. No rain tonight. Skies are partly cloudy. Tomorrow morning, kick it off with partly cloudy skies. A mild start for this time of year at 46. Kind of breezy. Wind southwest 10 to 15. Cooler temps coming our way and some showers too. Forecast next. Right now on News Channel 6 at 11, Harley Davis sworn in for his second term. What he's hoping to accomplish in the Garden City. Plus, cleanup is underway and federal investigators trying to figure out what caused a train derailment in Jefferson County. And South Carolina state senators return to the state house tomorrow. A closer look at one bill that would legalize and regulate medical marijuana as your news at 11 starts right now. Live from Television Park, this is WJBF News Channel 6 at 11. I'm Sean Cabbage Stock. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Coverage you can count on begins in Bartow, Georgia, where evacuees are back home tonight following a train derailment Sunday. It happened at around 8 o'clock and fears that chlorine has spilled forced evacuations for people within a seven mile radius. The last of those evacuees were allowed back into their homes this morning. Our Renetta Dubose spoke with a man who runs a dairy farm where that train derailment took place. Andrew Peachy says that he and his family evacuated after smelling what appeared to be chlorine. Norfolk Southern spent the day building a road throughout the farm on Friendship Church Road to access the train tracks and to fix the problem. Peachy says that the railroad company was extremely professional. At this point, I'm going to let those professionals do their job and I'm going to keep doing my profession milking cows. That's great. I'm That's thankful great. that my cows are still here to milk. And four deputies were taken to a hospital for treatment. Two of those deputies are now at the burn center. We're working to learn their conditions tonight. We've learned from the Jefferson County emergency management officials that the chemicals that leak were hydrochloric acid and hydrogen peroxide. Our Ashley Osborne spoke to a chemistry professor at Augusta University about the spill. He explains that hydrogen peroxide in your medicine cabinet is only about 2%. Industrially, it is used at a much higher strength and it makes it dangerous and corrosive. The same goes for hydrochloric acid. Both of them are going to be corrosive. They will you know, damage your skin, they'll damage your respiratory tract. Uh, they are toxic. And he says trains are safer for carrying these types of chemicals because although possible, an accident is less likely than it is for a truck on the road. The Federal Railroad Administration records information on train accidents. They say human factors are the number one cause and track issues are the second highest cost. Sunday also marks the 14th anniversary of the Graniteville train wreck that killed nine people. It was January 6, 2005 when a no Fork Southern train carrying chlorine ran off the tracks. It took several years for the community to recover. We are awaiting autopsy results tonight on a Barnwell County couple whose bodies were found at a state park in Bamberg County. Jamel Carter and Janie Natos was last seen leaving their Barnwell County home back on December 14th. Their bodies were found Friday at Rivers Bridge State Park and identified over the weekend. Those autopsies are being performed in Newberry tonight. We'll let you know what we find out first on WJBF.com. The Richmond County Sheriff's Office need your help finding a missing man. Nicholas LeBeau was last seen December 15th in the 1800s block of Ivan Street. Authorities say he is very paranoid and believes he's in danger. He should be driving a 2016 Silver Honda Fit with Georgia tags PLD 5022T. His family believes he has spray paint the vehicle black. If you have any information, call authorities immediately. All quiet and comfortable this Monday night. Chiffy Lube Skyview Network overlooking downtown Augusta. As far as our current numbers, are pretty much everybody in the 50s. There are some 40s uh, hanging around uh, Thompson and Deering at 48 degrees, but you'll see a mild 57 in Evans, 59 right now in Augusta, 54 at Fort Gordon, 56 in Aiken. And as far as any rain, skies are dry, not expecting any rain. As a cold front rolls our way tomorrow, it'll come through dry, but will usher in some of the first cool temperatures we've seen so far this year. Tomorrow morning, start your day partly cloudy and 46, uh, 57 at 10. 
a rather mild 66 at noontime. Kind of a breezy day tomorrow. Winds out of the southwest at 10 miles an hour. We'll check out those cooler temps and an opportunity for some rain coming our way this weekend. Forecast in a second. Sean. All right, George, thank you so much. Mayor Hardy Davis now in his second term as the 84th mayor of Augusta. This is following a swearing in ceremony earlier this evening. Our Devin Johnson is live in the studio. He was at the inauguration tonight for the mayor. Hey there. Hey, Sean, more than 500 citizens filled the Miller Theater on Broad Street to see Mayor Hardy Davis take his oath into office. The mayor tells me he has bigger goals in mind for his second time in office. We talked about the city that we could be, the city that we wanted to be and needed to be. And so we've made uh, significant strides towards that. We're going to continue to do that even uh, beyond today. Uh, but without question, it continues today on into the future. One Augusta is the vision Mayor Hardy Davis had when he first took office in 2015. Four years later, he's continuing with his vision he has for the city. Mayor Davis says his second term in office will consist of addressing more citizens' concerns. We're going to bring people together uh, in ways that we've never done before. We're going to have conversations that we've never had before so that we truly can become that one Augusta that I talked about four years ago. And we're going to continue talking about that until the very day that we leave this office. The citizens of Augusta watched as Mayor Davis took his oath to serve four more years in office. They hung on every word as he talked about continuing improving economic growth and development. Together, we're going to make Augusta the place of choice where people want to live, to learn, to work, and to raise their families. That's what we've said from day one. That's the journey that we continue beyond today. Augusta's 84th mayor tells me the choice of having the inauguration in the Miller Theater is so the community can experience the growth the city is making. Uh, we wanted this to be the centerpiece of as we come to uh, the dawn of a new administration, a new uh, four-year term where folks have a chance to come and visit this amazing place that quite frankly opened up a year ago today. Mayor Davis says he's excited for his second term but there's still more improvements to come. It is our work, Augusta, and we've got more work to do. And after the ceremony, a few people got an opportunity to take a photo with the mayor. They also got a chance to take to express their concerns with the city. Sean, back over to you. All right, Devin, thank you so much. Some Augusta commissioners say they are underpaid for the work they do. City leaders meeting with state lawmakers asking for the salaries of elected officials to be reviewed with the idea that raises are in order. Except for a cost of living increase, the pay hasn't been adjusted since the start of consolidation 23 years ago. Commissioners cannot raise their own pay, so state lawmakers will have to approve it first. I think the conversation should be had. I have nothing, I have really no problem with the concept of having a raise. You're talking about having uh, multi-million dollar companies coming in, and we're talking about attracting new people to the commission, younger people. How are you going to be able to do that at the pay scale that it is today? And the chairman of the legislative delegation, Wayne Howard, says that salaries should absolutely be reviewed this session. The delegation is asking commissioners to provide more information, such as how big of a raise they want. Augusta's main water line is being redirected. Work is getting underway to reroute a section of the city's 60-inch water line off of Washington Road across from Augusta's National Gate 1. This line carries water from the pumping station to Highland Avenue treatment plant. The detour is to get the pipe out of the way of the project on land owned by the golf club. The city is monitoring the work and the pipe will be offline for about a week. The state of Georgia taking steps to help children with dyslexia. The state Senate committee is making the, re the recommendations. They recently submitted a report to the legislator. The group heard from parents, teachers, and education experts. They advised the committee to develop a college curriculum for teachers who will work with those kids. They also suggest screening for dyslexia for kindergartners. They also propose a statewide teacher training as well as evaluations. South Carolina Congressman Joe Wilson is laying out his legislative agenda for next year. At a stop in Aiken today, he talked about his support for President Trump's military pledges, as well as plans to add jobs locally. The president says that the U.S. forces need to exit Syria. Wilson also talked about the partial government shutdown. He says the ball is now in the court of the Democrats. December the 20th, uh, I voted along with the Republican majority of the House to provide for keeping the government open, providing for the uh, wall and the, uh, the security barriers, and also we voted for uh, disaster relief. And Wilson says he's also keeping with America's alliance with Israel and reducing terrorist violence in the Middle East. 
A South Carolina lawmaker is baking a bill that will legalize medical marijuana for those with terminal or life-threatening illnesses. More than three dozen states have passed laws legalizing marijuana in some form. The bill will let patients possess and consume marijuana and will let licensed shops cultivate and dispense the plant. I think that once people understand that this is not a just legalized marijuana bill, it's, it's a bill, it's a medical marijuana bill for medical reasons. Uh, and it will be highly regulated by DHEC and by SLED. A second state lawmaker is proposing a bill that will only apply to military veterans who were dishonorably discharged and suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. Aiken Regional Medical Centers is taking steps to combat the spread of the flu virus. The hospital announcing today that people 12 years and younger would now be allowed to visit patients in the facility. The hospital's chief operating officer says this is an effort to keep patients, visitors, and hospital staff healthy this flu season. No word on how long that restriction will last. The government shutdown continues for its 16th day, and tomorrow President Trump will address the nation. The latest from Washington coming up. Now, your most accurate forecast with WJBF Live Viper 6 in partnership with AECOM, built to deliver a better world. Once again, our viewers ready with their cameras to snap some beautiful sunset pictures for you. Showed a few at 10 o'clock. Here's a couple more. Cleve Coon, Aiken County, a beautiful purple pink sunset there over the Midlands of South Carolina. And Dan Leonard had his camera all set to go in McDuffie County. A, a golden sunset there silhouetting the trees in the countryside. Thank you, Cleve and Dan, as always, for those beautiful pictures. Today's high, 72 degrees. Uh, our seventh straight day with temperatures well above average. 38 our morning low. That's our coolest temperature so far this year, but it's still 5 degrees above normal. 80 our hottest ever, 12 our coldest, no rain today. As far as a look outdoors, all is quiet and dry. Washington Road, Jiffy Lube, Skyview Network. Temperatures right now, a low to middle 50s up towards the lake. 48 in a Thompson for one of our cooler spots. 50 right now in Augusta, Aiken here at 54 and low and middle 50s from Louisville to Waynesboro, south of Swainsboro, over towards Barnwell, Bamberg and Allendale counties. Wake up temperatures tomorrow again. Average low this time of year is 32, 33 tomorrow morning. Morning. We'll start our day in the middle and upper 40s, even a few spots way to the south 
You'll start your day right around 50 degrees. Uh, no rain. Skies are dry across Georgia and South Carolina right now. There is a cold front to our west, but it's not producing a, a whole lot. You'll see a, a couple sprinkles in the mountains of North Carolina. And as we pull out even further, it's a very quiet night across much of the eastern U.S. So this front is not going to pack much of a punch as it comes through uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, looking forward to just a couple extra clouds, so a partly sunny start tomorrow, maybe a sprinkle around Atlanta as the front rolls our way during the afternoon. We'll hang on to partly cloudy, dry conditions. It will be a bit breezy. Winds out of the southwest at 10 to 15 miles an hour. Once the front gets to the east of us, cooler, drier air rolls in, and that means our temperatures will dip to normal or just below normal levels as we head towards Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Then Saturday, showers roll in and temperatures drop even further. Forecast looks like this tomorrow at 846, 66 at noon, partly sunny, high of 72. Wind southwest at 10 to 15 miles an hour. Seven day forecast, watch how the temperatures tumble. 58 Wednesday, 52 Thursday, 50 on Friday, all with sunshine. Then clouds and some rain roll in Saturday with a high of only 45 degrees. And then on Sunday, clouds, showers, and 50s. So getting wet and cooling off big time, Sean. All right. Thank you so much, George. Sure. And they were trailblazers and girls scouting in the early 1970s. Be sure to join our Jenny Montgomery tomorrow for a look back at Breaking Barriers. The leader of Augusta's first integrated Girl Scout troop and some of those former brownies talk about their experiences in scouting and how they didn't realize, at least at the time, that their troop was such a big deal. I decided, why not? I mean, we should yeah. do it. So I went around to the schools with second graders and left notes and said, if you have children, who, daughters who want to be in a scout troop, give me a call. And that's how we got started. And also on Tuesday's show, events for former Girl Scouts in the Augusta area, including a big alumni luncheon next week, financial literacy, um, you know, get your new year started with smart spending and saving. All of that's tomorrow at 1230, right after News Channel 6 at noon. A victim of sex trafficking serving a life sentence behind bars is granted clemency. A closer look at Cynthia Brown's story coming up. But first, the winning numbers for tonight's South Carolina lottery. Pick 3, 722, two, and pick 4, 8153. Good Cabbage stock. Ah, uh, isn't it Cynthia? Oh, oops.
And the governor of Tennessee has granted clemency to a woman serving a life sentence for murder who says she was a victim of sex trafficking. The governor says that 30-year-old Santonia Brown will now be released August 7th. She will remain on parole for 10 years. Brown was convicted of murdering 43-year-old Johnny Allen. She was 16 years old at the time, and officials say she was bought for sex. President Trump headed to the southern border this week, but first an address to the nation tomorrow as he considers declaring a national emergency to build that southern wall. ABC's Kenneth Moulton has the latest. President Trump is preparing to take his fight for southern border wall straight to the American people in a prime time address. We're looking at a national emergency because we have a national emergency. Just read the papers. The president is demanding $5.7 billion for a steel barrier, not concrete. Democrats still say it's not happening. This is not the way to govern. To pound your fist on the table and cause damage to millions of people unless I get my way. With TSA workers set to miss a paycheck Friday, the agency is preparing for agents to call in sick. There's been a slight increase, but TSA says it has not impacted operations. In a letter to the president, the Airline Pilots Association says the shutdown is adversely affecting the safety, security, and efficiency of our national airspace system. It's a stressful job to begin with. Uh, secondly, these are people's lives that we're dealing with. Uh, Everyone else just got done paying for Christmas, and, and, and now there's no money coming in. 800,000 federal employees are still not getting paid. At the end of the day, there's not a lot that I can do. I'm locked out of my job. I want to go to work. Trying to mitigate the impact, the White House says unlike past shutdowns, the IRS will process tax refunds. And HUD sent a letter to more than 1,000 landlords urging them not to evict tenants. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, Washington. An update from the college football playoff national championships. Hear from fans inside the stadium watching Alabama and Clemson. That's coming up next in sports. Mic check one, two, three, four. Mic check, mic four. Sure, if you want to, probably makes more sense than going straight into the package. Okay. Now, sports coverage you can count on. The college football playoff national championship underway right now at Levi Stadium in Santa Clara, California. The Alabama Crimson Tide and Clemson Tigers meeting in the title game for the third time in four years. 
Fourth straight year they've met in the playoffs. This one looks like nothing else we've seen lately, though. 44 to 16 heading. They're in the fourth quarter. We're talking about 31 straight points from Clemson to blow this game wide open. By far the largest deficit a Nick Saban Alabama Crimson Tide team has ever seen. Still got some time left, but this one getting out of hand for Clemson and Alabama. We've got some friends from our affiliates at the game out in Santa Clara, California. Some of them in the stadium talking to fans about their experience. As a lot of fans are in the stadium watching the game, a bunch of them also come out to the concessions area and some tell me it's to calm down their nerves. Alabama and Clemson fans say the energy at Levi Stadium is unreal. The Levi Stadium is an amazing venue to watch football because it's like the perfect football uh, park and you feel like you're part of the crowd and you know instead of myself and my wife high-fiving each other it's like you and like 50 of your closest friends that you've never met before. Oh it's fantastic the energy level is very good in the stadium it's not the same as at home. A lot of people were spotted getting their drink and snack that's because some have a tradition. We stand a lot. <laughs> we stand a lot. Yes so I always drink Budweiser when I'm watching the game it's the only beer I drink. Uh, well, I used to get superstitious when I used to play baseball, but other than that, I don't really like to stay. I like to keep it all on the field. I got to stay standing. If I feel like I sit down, then the bad stuff happens. If I'm standing up at all times during the game time, then my good stuff happens. They say no matter what they do, though, they can't help how they feel during the game. Scared, <laughs> especially when it comes to that kicker. tell me that they're not so much superstitious, but they do like to walk around a lot like here in the concession area to calm their nerves. I'm Hillary Simon, the Bay Area. Back to you. Not a lot of nerves for the people wearing orange. Yeah. Uh, the people in crimson, some of them might have left by now. We'll have a full wrap for you on Good Morning Augusta if you're getting up early. All right, thank you so much. We'll be right back. You're watching WJBF News Channel 6 at 11. Uh, yes, of course. Uh.
Right now, we have partly cloudy skies, a nice, comfortable evening for early January. Temperature at 50, winds are calm. Uh, tomorrow, another balmy day, more like middle of April. 72 for your high with partly cloudy skies. We'll start at 46, both those numbers way above average. And the winds out of the southwest are at around 10 to about 15 miles an hour. Now, here are the changes coming our direction. A cold front comes through. Uh, tomorrow late, that'll bring cool air in for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Temps will be in the 50s and dropping each day. By Saturday, clouds and some rain and 45 degrees. Scattered showers for Saturday and Sunday and highs in the 50s. So temperatures going below normal and getting a bit damp as we head towards this upcoming weekend. Lows will be in the 30s, Sean. All right, thank you so much, George. And a woman in Aiken is looking to make sure you have healthy food options. Jen Steller has been making healthy casserole dishes with keto and other healthy options for years. She says it was her love of baking and the need for another revenue stream that gave her the idea. Now she's looking to open her own restaurant, but she needs your help. I need the help of the city of Aiken, the residents, you know, I need neighbors, anyone. I just want to help bring something new to the community. I was born and raised here um, and I just we have some amazing restaurants and I just want to be a part of it. And coming up this week on News Channel 6, I'll share more details on a stellar kitchen and what Jen Steller says motivates her to work for the people of Aiken. All right, and that's all the time we have for you today. The news continues online at WJBF.com. Join Mary and Barkley tomorrow morning at 430 for Good Morning Augusta. We'll see you later. Have a good night.